Welcome to The Gathering Greenhouse, a podcast to help us grow together. Yeah, nice. I'm John. And this I'm David. Is, and we're going to have some fun conversation today. I feel like we're those um, those Saturday Night Live, like NPR talk oh, show hosts. Ones, yeah. yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. my, my favorite. What if we did the whole podcast like that? Like <laughs> In the, this tone. They're just really soft talking. I don't think I could keep that up for very long, but my... my uh, Parks and Rec is one of my favorite shows, mm. and they have like a rolling bit throughout that where they make make fun of NPR. And like, that's the one with is it uh, who's the meat guy? Ron Swanson. Ron Swanson. Yep. Yeah. Didn't really watch the show, but my kids really watched. He's probably it. my one of my favorite characters in all TV. I feel like I agree with him on most things. He's uh he's his character is like hyper libertarian, yep. but also hyper like like real manly like. I don't buy things. I fix things kind of, right. You know, but he's a, he's a real libertarian, not like the, yeah, the yeah, stuff not, that gets not, passed not off. A, not a, liber- not a conservative who wants to be a libertarian, like or a, on, or a, or a or, liberal. Yeah, that yeah. Wants to be, I mean, he, he's a leave me alone. I'm in the woods. I'm doing my own thing. I don't want, to, right. You know, yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. It's like the political expression of a hermit is what the he is. Libertarian today in the political world has turned out to just be whoever the most viable third party candidate is. Yeah. Right. Like it's, it's going to be Robert Kennedy this have, have year. Have you ever watched the Libertarian debates? No. You look them up on YouTube. I probably should. You will have so much fun. Uh, it, sound, it does sound like fun, actually. <laughs> when, you, when you have uh, a whole political view based on the premise of you can't tell me what to do, it's kind of like the right. fundamental. But then you have everybody coming with their agenda within mm-hmm. that, and then there's no unified thing. It's... It's great. Do you, are you old enough to remember the guy who, I don't remember what he was running for, but in New York City, that his his whole campaign was the rent's too, and then he had an oh, expletive, yeah. the yeah, rent's too darn that. high. Yep. And that was his answer to every question. Yep. He almost won. I don't think he really you know, you, won. You find the thing that people really can grab onto and just hammer it over right. and over again. So. so it's February. It is February. And we're already talking election. Well, we're talking about libertarians, so I don't really know that (laughs) that has much to do with the election. (laughs) But it is crazy. It it feels like there wasn't a break between last time and this time. I guess just kept rolling. We've never done a podcast in an election year. That's true. That is true. But it's felt like it's (laughs) almost like we have been in one. (laughs) Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. It's going to get wild, I think, uh, here in the next few months. You know what's crazy is when you said it's felt like, you know, you remember like 2020 felt like it was like a whole decade on itself. Yep. And and really we now remember 2020 for COVID and the presidential election. Those were the two big, big things in 2020. But I don't know if you remember like all the stuff before COVID. I mean, before COVID even hit, there was all this crazy stuff. Like it, it started with Kobe Bryant's helicopter crash. Yep. And then I don't, I don't remember. Like I was saying, I don't remember all the other stuff. But there's all these things that happened, and then it was COVID. So, uh, which I might, is why I think a lot of us didn't believe COVID was really happening. I'm gonna ask you about the Kobe Bryant thing for a second. Okay. Because uh, this is a this was actually a like uh, not a fight with me and my wife, but it was like a thing where we kept talking about it, like a long term discussion. You talk to your wife about Kobe Bryant? Yes, in this very specific. Uh, okay. So so when the hel- helicopter cr- crashed, like I didn't feel like a lot of emotions. I and she was like, "Why aren't you sad?" And I was like, "I don't know." Kobe Bryant and I'm not like a huge basketball fan um and but she has the same relationship to Kobe that I do right but she was devastated she, she was like it was really sad and tragic and my heartless because I, you know I think it's horrible like I I I have a sympathy for like his family and for the people who knew him but I I didn't have I guess empathy you know I didn't, are, are I didn't you feel really it. asking me well about- no so so I'm, I'm asking you because of this like um is it crazy that I didn't? Uh, am I heartless for not? And as somebody else who probably sits along those those lines, like, what do you do with that criticism? And, and here is the, the the real flaw of today's podcast setup: is we have zero. There's no human empathetic <laughs> person. <on here. laughs> so Matt, Matt's probably the most empathetic in the room, and I, I question him sometimes. There's so. there's there, there's like maybe half an emotion combined yeah. in here right now. <laughs> but before coming in. And uh, you said, uh, no, I have feelings. And I said, you have one. No, I said feeling. Have, I, yeah, I, I said, said feeling. feeling. I have a feeling. <laughs> yeah, it got hurt once. <laughs> one time. <laughs> yeah. And that was it. No. So, I mean, back back to Kobe Bryant. You know, I, I understand that whole conversation. I, I feel a lot like you do. Like, I, I'm, I'm kind of detached from it. I think probably for me, there's a little more emotion there um, because my kids are older. Yeah. Right. And so there's that whole, that whole you know, part of it where it, his, his daughter's his with daughter, him. Yeah. 
And and so I'm thinking, you know, what were those last moments like yeah. for a dad who's your daughter's with? It, I, I think there's some stuff there. But but generally, when that stuff happens, yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty detached from this. You know, I, I, I expend most of my emotional energy on the people closest to me and my dogs. <laughs> and, and so there, there's that. No. Also, so, you know, in our house, Kobe Bryant has always been more of a, a villain. Really? Than a hero. And I, I know for a lot of people, he's a hero. Yeah. But, you know, early on, Kobe made some really bad choices. I don't know if you're old enough to remember this. I remember a few things. <laughs> And and so that was in the days when the Pistons were a really good basketball team. And so in our house, we were big Pistons fans. We were following it. They played each other in the NBA Finals. I remember the Pistons knocked off really the first super team. You yeah. know, before you had LeBron and, and Wade and what the big guy. And Chris Bosh. Bosh. Yeah. You know, you, you had these Lakers that had Shaquille O'Neal and yep. Kobe. And then they added Carl Malone yep. and Gary Payton. And then the Pistons beat them. Yeah. Right? Um, and, and so that's to us – our first, you know, intro to Kobe was those days, and so we didn't, we've never really been big. I, I do, I do admire Kobe for having turned his life around after those mistakes, yeah. and, and and that's a really cool thing that somebody can do that and rehabilitate themselves. So, so well done to him for that. But yeah, yeah. also we we kind of looked at that whole helicopter thing. We're like, well, they shouldn't have been in the helicopter. Right. That was a bad decision, right? And and sometimes bad decisions have really bad consequences and in that case i heard a lot of other people i remember when i heard the headline i was just kind of like that's not a real story like that that can't be uh that can't be true like it was just two kobe bryant one you know hearing someone who's a a healthy young like i mean he was he's an athlete a top Mm -hmm. tier athlete so you're not expecting to hear his name on the list of people who pass away um but then in in something so obscure as a helicopter Uh, right yeah is, is really cool speaking of uh headlines that are unbelievable Nice. I, I, I'm pretty proud that of that was, segment that right there. That was really well done. Uh, I, I have a little, uh, I don't know if we want to call it a game, but an activity okay. uh, that we're going to do today. Um, you're, you're a fairly well-informed uh, person, would you say? Some, sometimes. I, I, yeah. Dep- depends on the... Depend on who you're talking to and what's the issue. Yeah, and, like you drop like social media stuff yeah. on me, so I don't have a clue. Yeah. But but yes. You, you, you tend to know what's going on in the news. I try. Um, you might not be aware of this, but uh, there is a whole segment of news, uh, niche news, that is just about Christianity and the church. Um, and uh, some of it gets a little wild sometimes. Yeah. I mean, a, a good comparison would be, you know, people who know all the like investing news. Yes. Right? Like they, they know all the stuff. They don't just know what's going up and what's going down, but you know, this person's becoming the CEO of this company yes. and that's really important because like a lot of people don't, I don't know any of that stuff, Yeah, but, but this is your, now you're talking about our area, yes. which you're probably more informed than I am. I, but we'll I, see. I think I get the headlines faster than you do, but that's just cause I'm in the, like the social, like YouTube right. commentator space. Like, like sometimes you'll send me things yeah. and like, you'll, you'll you have to look it up. <laughs> you'll make a throwaway comment. Like you just did this yeah. for some of the videos <laughs> you were making. You were like, this one guy might be an example. And I was like, yeah, you're like. So I had to go look up. I had to go figure out what the controversy was. Who is this guy? <laughs> yeah. No. It, yeah. Um, but you know what's really fun about you know the, there's just a lot more and because of the internet we have access to it. So so right. here, here's the game we're gonna play. All right. Okay. I have gone. Uh, I and I. This is all the information I'm gonna give to you about the game. I googled top Christian headlines today, and I pulled several headlines. Was that today? It was today. Today. Okay. Today. Today. Yes. So if you're watching this, um, it was yesterday. So the just day to clarify, in the past, you Googled top Christian headlines today, today. Not, not I Googled top Christian headlines today, but you Googled top Christian yeah. headlines today. Another way I could say today. It is today. I Googled top Christian headlines. Um, oh, so you didn't Google <laughs> no top today, Christian, today. <laughs> you didn't Google top Christian headlines today. I don't remember what I typed. So these are all from today's web page. Who's though, on so. first? <laughs> Nobody at the moment. Baseball hasn't Josh started. Today. Yes. <laughs> but I didn't search today. I did my search today. I'm confused. Are you confused? <laughs> All right. So here's the, here's the deal. There's so we're not talking about today's top Christian headlines. We're talking about just Christian headlines. And from today. But I don't know. I'm confused. Search today. Search today. Yes. Okay. So but here, here, here's, there's five of these You're headlines. You're never going to get those three minutes of your life back. <laughs> If you're still with us, uh, four of the he- these headlines are real headlines that I pulled from these Christian news articles. Okay. One of them 
is not a real thing. Okay. 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 So I'm going to read these to you. And after I read them to you, you guys can guess too. Uh, but I want you to guess which one you think is the fake one. All okay. right. Are you going to read all five? I'm going to read all five okay. up front. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> Number one. Ancient Christ tattoo discovered on 1,300-year-old body near Sudan Monastery. Wait, wait. So, <laughs> yeah. What was the second part of that? Ancient what? Uh, discovered on... No, what was the tattoo? Ancient, and it just says Christ tattoo. Christ tattoo. Christ tattoo. Okay. Um, number two, uh, Muslims are falsely claiming conversion to Christianity to gain asylum in the UK. Okay. Florida pastor announces plan. It all sounds like Florida man, right? This is the Christian version of Florida Florida man. (laughs) That's funny. (laughs) Florida pastor announces plan to move church fully to metaverse following release of Apple's Vision Pro. Which have you seen those? They're like the those are those goggles things. Mm-hmm. Okay, I don't understand what the point of those is. I I, I don't want to wear something all the like time. The, that's not virtual reality, right? It, no, you're it's still like, looking it's augmented at the, reality. You're looking at the same thing, but there's it, it can be both. Because I saw some guy w- wearing one at a basketball game, yeah, like a pro basketball. So game. he probably had like the stats and stuff up as he's watching through. It's it's weird, but all right. So that's number three. Number four is Christian Swifty an oxymoron. Wait, is that part of the headline? That is the headline. Oh, wait, wait. Christian Swifty is, is the term oxymoron. Christian Swifty and oxymoron. Is there a question mark in this yep. headline? Yep. Christian Swifty. and oxymoron. An oxymoron. Okay. Yep. And number four, Virginia pastor dies from severe burns following fire pit explosion. And you made one of these up. I made one of these up. <laughs> I feel like I could have made most of these up. You did really well. I'm, I'm glad. I'm actually kind of proud of myself. Yeah. I, can I look at them? Yeah. Okay. You're, 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 you're going to figure this out if you, uh, you're you going to look for grammar. Yeah, absolutely, I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So ancient Christ tattoo discovered on 1,300-year-old body. Now, th- see, my, my issue with this one is I – the, the way bodies were being preserved 1,300 years ago, I'm not sure would have... Al- yeah, how do you find a tattoo on a... Allowed like a, for that. Yeah. Like, I, I I would be much more inclined to think it was a 4,000-year-old body because th- those are preserved. Or, or like something that was found like in a peat bog in Ireland my, or something like that. My only thought is since it's sedan, is it was probably very dry. Okay. And that might be All the right. only reason. Okay. Okay. Near Sudan. All right. All right, Muslims are falsely claiming conversion to Christianity to gain asylum in UK. Judges fear. I didn't say that part. Okay. That that seems fairly realistic, but okay. Florida. Pa- <laughs> this one feels funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's kind of crazy. The, the it feels too the, crazy, right? So the thing about that one is I would be inclined to say that's the one, but I could also <laughs> like, <laughs> like it, the world we live in. You could actually still see that be. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It is, is a Christian Swifty an oxymoron? You know, a, a great conversation to have sometime is, is how do you pronounce the Y in oxymoron? Yeah. Is it oxymoron or is it oxymoron? I say oxymoron, yeah. but. One of my old from, English professors used to say oxymoron, so that's that's kind of I adapted that. All right, and Virginia pastor dies from severe burns following fire pit explosion. Now I feel like that might hit home because we we do have a fire pit and <laughs> and Steve explodes Steve, it every Steve year. It blew up one time and yeah. Are we going to talk about why Steve's not here today? I actually I, I know he's gone. I don't know where he's. Uh, why no, he's but gone. I fired him from the podcast oh, yeah. last week, but I don't remember why. <laughs> Matt, do you remember why, why Steve got fired last week? I should. I remember you, you promised he definitely won't be here next right. week. Yeah, and people probably thought that was harsh, but I'm a man of my word. Also, we uh, also we have vacations. He, also, he's on vacation. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with and again, you did you did really well on this. I'm gonna go with the Florida pastor announces plans to move church fully to Metaverse following release of Apple's Vision Pro. That that, is the that's fake. the one. That's the fake. I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you though. 
Do you want to know how I know that? It's too long? No, because in, in four of the five headlines, all the words are capitalized. Yep. And in that one, they were I not. Because I typed it. Yeah. Yep. I figured you copied and pasted. Dead giveaway. That was kind of... Nice. See what nice. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> that was I don't even know what that's from. You don't? It's from when those, remember those girls were uh, like held hostage in a house in Cleveland forever and ever? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then one of them <laughs> escaped, right? Oh. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, but no, I sang it to Smooth Criminal. Well, that's how the so so, like, I, I so you had the guy who who found them or who who like the girl escaped and ran out to this guy and then somebody like mixed his. I said my my favorite testament, my favorite testimony is the hide your kids hide your wife video. It was one of my favorite yeah. ones that's gone viral. No, the internet used to be. I better. don't even know what that one is, but hide your the, kids hide your wife. I don't know, but the dead giveaway one. I love that. Matt, can you find that video? And uh, we might play a little clip here. So uh, that, that, he's, like, that, he's like, I ate ribs with that dude, uh, but I didn't have a clue. So I remember when that girl was in that. House. It was like anything that went viral, like out. 2008 to 2014, got auto tuned, mm -hmm. and they don't do that anymore. It's uh, bring can it we, back. Can we start? Bring that back. Can we start doing that with the sermons, Matt? Can we do auto tune sermons? Like, how about just our clips that we like our Let's shorts that we put on YouTube and Facebook? I could do it, Matt. I. Uh, you, Matt just said that he can do it. So now, Matt, your uh, job status here is now dependent upon wow. you being able to do this. Uh, do I get more hours or a pay raise? No. I don't care how you do it. No. <laughs> but no. the answer is probably no. No. Then, then I'm not <laughs> we're on a it. we're on a spending freeze. No money. All right. That's awesome. Yeah, that was fun. So, that was a good game. I mean, you did a good job, and I feel like I cheated a little bit by looking at the the phone. You know, but, but what's crazy about that is that was the second fake one. The first one I sent it sent it to my wife, and she was like, "It's pretty obvious." The first one, but uh, so I turned it to that. Um, but what I thing is funny is like part of me was like I could actually see this being yeah, like especially a real since thing. it was Florida yeah <laughs> Florida <laughs> makes a difference <laughs> that made it feel a little more possible so if you guys aren't familiar uh, church in Ohio is like you know what we're used to like it's what we do but uh, church in places like Florida and and Texas um, it's different there, there's some <laughs> it's bigger uh, a little more a little more lively I don't know there, there's just, just a different just, thing just, down just there just different yeah. yeah so you never know what you're gonna get from uh, Florida churches is it yeah. like a box of chocolates you never know life is what, like a box of chocolates yeah, yeah. That's all uh, right. the only song I know about chocolate I'm not gonna sing so I don't. I don't. Is it that. chocolate rain? Yep. Yeah. I don't know. That's, I don't know that's that another is. great YouTube. That is an OG YouTube, I think, from 2007. I say it was one of the first viral videos. So OG, Bye. OG, Bye. OG. Tay Zonday. Tay Zonday. Yep. Yeah, he's got like a super deep. They're, they're talking about things that I have no <laughs> clue about. No We're clue at all. Culture from I, 2004. I, I I am not hip with the culture <laughs> at all. You could have just said I'm not hip. <laughs> <laughs> I could have. Do your hips still work? Speaking of hips, uh, how'd your surgery go? I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, that would be funny if it weren't close to true. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah. Speaking of funny things. Speaking of funny things. Actually, I don't I don't think it's uh, inherently funny. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, uh, people do have fun with the topic. But we've been in a, a series about sex and marriage. Yep. yep. And uh, Sunday... Yep. You, uh, your whole message was about sex and sexuality. And so you've already said that word so many times that this video I'm is going to get record. banned. Sex, sex, sex. Yeah. You know, you know, the, the worst thing is we're going to have more people from the church Watch watching this, this today <laughs> because normal. Steve talked about it on and Sunday. they're going to say, what do you, what do you guys do? Uh, this is what we do. We have fun. It's okay to have fun. And I try to keep things in line. Yes. Yeah. And you fail at doing mostly, <laughs> mostly. Yeah. So, so here, here's my question, right off the bat. So, dealing with the topic of, of sexuality, that's not something we talk about often in church. Nope. Um, in fact, many churches never talk about it. Yes. Um, for for a few reasons, I think the first is sometimes it feels like it can get controversial, right? People have yes. really strong feelings when it comes to sex and sexuality. Um, the other issue is. Often we kind of say it's kind of icky, like we don't want to yep. talk about mm -hmm. about this. And so I'm just curious, what for you, like when you're preparing for this message, how you're going into this, what are some of those things that are going through your mind? How are you preparing to um, 
speak on this topic and this and it's super relevant topic, something we mm-hmm. do need to talk about. Um, but how do you how do you get ready to preach on on a topic that you know could easily be controversial, divisive, or just um, a turn off to people in yeah. general? Yeah. So I'm I'm definitely on the end of the spectrum that is super uncomfortable having these kind of conversations in church. Uh, it's just not in my makeup to want to get up and talk about sex. That's, <laughs> what, just that's not, not, not a high goal that, of yours. That's, <laughs> that's not it at all. Uh, and, and so for me, I think it starts with, I have to convince myself that this is important. And, and if, if, if I'm not convinced that it's important, it's going to be really tough yeah. for me to do, but I am convinced that it's important. And I think on, 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 on two fronts, I think the first front, and I talked about this a little bit on Sunday is that the world is bombarding us with ideas about sex and sexuality and telling us what is and isn't appropriate, what is and isn't right. And I think that we have to combat that a little bit. Mm-hmm. And, and I want to, as much as I can, give people the tools to combat that a little bit. But also, I, I think a healthy marriage requires a healthy perspective on sex. And we didn't dive deeply into that on Sunday, and we, we won't. But I think the the fundamentals that we, we kind of talked through are, are really important for people understanding that sex is not just another thing, yeah. right? It's not just something that's that's fun and pleasurable, and that's why we do it. There's there's actually, it's deeply significant, and it's purposeful, and there, there's there's something about it because it's this gift from God that, that makes it unique to virtually any other human mm-hmm. experience. And, and so that means it's something that we, we have to treat a little bit differently. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, that's, that for me, that's where it starts. It's just, yeah. why am I doing this? Yeah. Is, 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 am I adding value to people's life by having this, preaching this sermon? Yeah. It's, it's a definitely probably a lot easier to approach a, a topic like this. If you are feeling the conviction that it needs to be addressed mm-hmm. versus just being like, oh, I feel like we probably need to talk about, you know, cause there are issues that we, we say we need to regularly talk about in the mm-hmm. church. Um, I don't think that this one falls into that regular calendar. No. Um, and so for some of those, you don't have to be highly convicted. Just know like we're leading into Christmas. We're going to talk about Christ coming. Right. Right. And we're leading into yeah. Easter. We're going to talk about the resurrection. Um, it doesn't really matter if you're, you're super motivated or like convicted, like that's what we preach, you know? Right. Um, but a topic like this, I mean, if you have to have some conviction to even be willing to open that because you know that as soon as you start preaching on it, uh, someone's going to be uncomfortable with what right. what you said, and you hear about it. Yeah, you know? yeah. I, I and I think I even underestimated the number of people who just want to be told that they're not crazy. Yeah, because I, th- I think if, if you hold a, a view that sex is something that's reserved for marriage, and it's something that should happen between a man and a woman in marriage and, and nowhere else. You know, you're you're pretty much told that you're nuts. Yeah. Right? That that the world says that's that's crazy, that's old fashioned, that's that's ridiculous. And I think I, I underestimated this and just based on conversations I had yesterday after church, I was surprised by how many people said something to the effect of I just needed to hear that. Yeah. Like you didn't tell me anything I didn't know, <laughs> but I just needed to hear it. Yeah, I think uh, you know, so you know, for for people my age, right? Uh, we've grown up in a world that uh, very quickly was telling us that a Christian sexual ethic was um, not just uh, silly, right? But it was actually, you're you're kind of bigoted if you yeah. believe this thing that we've believed for millennia, right? Yeah. Um, and um, there's a temptation in that to be like, Oh well, if I'm the only one that believes this, I must be not. I must be the crazy one, right? I'm the right. weird one, and it's almost like it's uh, it's good to get permission to, to, mm-hmm. from from uh, from the church to be like, no, we we still believe this, and yeah. we still hold true to this, and um, you're not crazy for for feeling the way you do, because um, you do feel crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you don't want to talk about this in in a, in a public space because you yeah. know you're going to be the odd odd one out um, in today's world. Um, do you, do you think that with how um, pervasive um, some of the, you know, I mean, just even on the imagery side, it's everywhere. The conversation's everywhere. Um, <laughs> a video I was going to send you a clip to see if you wanted to talk about. There, there's a show on NBC right now that is like The Bachelor, but for thruples. Wait, what? It's, NBC is producing Wait, a show. For, for thruples. So three people, couples. <laughs> it doesn't sound real, right? So, so, but this is the world we this live is, in. It's not, not, I'm assuming this is not a Mormon thing. 
I no, uh, <laughs> that's sister wives. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, no. I mean this, and it's it, it's uh, the the trailer uh, was um, just all just sex, sex, sex. It was, um, you know, anything kind of goes, and um, you know, Beck and I saw that, and I we just kind of looked at each other like this this can't be real, um, but it is real, and it's it it's in the mainline uh, uh, culture and mainstream culture, and um, you know, it's 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 crazy to have to deal with and, and we're yeah. going to have to, I think, approach this in a, in a way so, that we haven't had to in, in the past. Yeah. So you just dropped this on me. And so yeah. my mind is kind of <laughs> like racing in about three different yeah. directions as to, you know, how to respond to that. Because there's, there, there, there's one, th- I, I, I want to talk about the absurdity of it. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I, what I want to do is I want to talk for a second about just the word throuple. Yeah. I, I, I do want to talk about that. I think it's significant, but, but I also, I, 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 I want to talk about the, the trajectory of permissiveness mm-hmm. in the realm of sexuality, because I think that's really yeah. important. So let me go back to thruple. And then you got to remind me, I want to come back to this, this topic Permiss- about per- permissiveness and sexuality. Yep. I think it, it really matters. So, so just, just the idea that we made this word up. Yeah. Right? Thruple. Okay. The, the, it, it's stolen from the word couple. Right now, I I talked about this on Sunday briefly, and I think I hit it more in second and third service than I did in first. Um, but th- this idea that one of the things that Satan loves to do is, is counterfeit God's good gifts, mm-hmm. right? And, and then what he and I, my I've, my phraseology was terrible, and I I, I don't like that. Mm-hmm. I wish I would have worked more on this this part of it. That when what, what Satan does, he likes to counterfeit God's good gifts, and then he tricks us or deceives us, probably the better word. He deceives us into accepting something that's, that's less good and more harmful, right? So when you say thruple, that's immediately where my mind goes is this is just so clearly taking a good thing, a couple and, and just saying, well, we're going to make it better, right? We're going to counterfeit this and make it, make it because if two is good, three must be better, right? Yeah. But, but no, um, my, I, what I would love is, is when they make shows like this before they make the show, wait five years. Right? I, I would love to see, <laughs> see where these thruples yeah, and, are at in five years, because I'm going to, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that more than 80%, my original thought was 90, but I'll dial it back more than 80% of these thruples will no longer be so together. <laughs> Two get yeah, that's funny. <laughs> I did, <is> together. <laughs> so, uh, what's really so? Uh, I agree with you because uh, so if, I don't know if you've at all watched the Sister Wives stuff. I'm um, familiar with it. So, yeah. uh, for you who aren't aware, Sister Wives is a show. It's about um, practicing Mormon polygamist. So he has yeah. four wives, but one real. It's it's confusing. But at the beginning of the show, it was just all about how they try to live together. And it, it was kind of cute. And it was interesting because you're like, how does that even work? And but it, does. it doesn't work. So this is the best part. As the show has progressed, and they're on like probably their last season, it would be my guest. Um, well, I, I thought they're all breaking up. They've all gotten divorced. All, all, I thought uh, he, he has I one left. He, he, so the three originals is, have left. And the, the, the one that's left is the last one in. Is the last one in. She's the youngest. Fascinating. It's, yeah. yeah. Um, she's also his legal wife. The only one that's his, because he divorced one of them to marry her um, legally. So he divorced the first one to marry her to marry the last one. So he got to adopt her. Is that right? Yeah, oh. to adopt her. So all the show now shows is pain uh, from this. Their kids are all messed up. Having, I mean, uh, talk about daddy issues. Like they all like hate him and don't have relationships <laughs> with him. They have strained relationships with their half siblings from these marriages because their moms didn't get along. Like it, it has just resulted in. And what I I just find fascinating is the show that started as a clear attempt to normalize polygamy has ended as the best argument against, against it. it yeah. And I have a feeling shows like this are, are going to have that. You, you're going to watch people have pain. And, and uh, even some of the clips on it were showing some of the drama because these people are were sexually involved with someone who wasn't their, you know, I don't know if their mm-hmm. spouse or significant other. Um, but there was pain there, even in a thruple, you know, something that they're choosing to engage right. in. Um, and so I, I think that's one of the things why it's so important for us to talk about sexuality is because when it's outside of what God has um, set up, the guardrails that he's given us, I mean, the result very often, and, and probably all, I would I would say always is pain and suffering. Yeah. So so what would you say, and I'm going to make yeah. you, make you be, the, be the, the preacher here. What would you say to the person who says, yeah, but read the Bible, 
right? All these great heroes of the faith yeah. were polygamists. Like, yeah. I, like, I mean, and, and polygamous is maybe not the right word because, you know, it is uh, weird. Solomon had uh, wives and concubines. Wives and right? concubines. But, um, but Abraham? Abraham, yeah. Right, Isaac. So, so I, no, not Isaac, not Isaac. No, uh, it was uh, so just, Jacob. Yeah, just just yeah. as a sidelight here, this is crazy stuff, right? So Isaac, of all of the patriarchs, so there's four main characters in Genesis: Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. Right? Isaac gets the least press. He only gets a couple of chapters. Yeah. He's a super minor character among those four. He, he's the only one, right? Who who seems to to you know stay yeah. married to one person. Now, now Joseph is married just to one. I, th yep. I think, but she's an Egyptian. Yeah. Right. And, and so it's, it's just, it's, there's a yeah. crazy thing. Well, but this, this is where it comes back to what we just said. Yeah. All those stories, the, the multiple it's, wives were either a result of something. Uh, so like Jacob gets tricked into marrying the woman he didn't love. Right. So he goes back and, you know, and you, so that wasn't ideal and it caused strife. Um, well, and then, and then you add in two concubines, two concubines. Right? Yeah. And, to and that, to that mix. And then, and then you go, uh, uh, to um, who was I just thinking? Abraham. About? Abraham. Uh, the whole thing with um, Sarah and um, Hagar. Hagar. Yep. Hagar. Um, Ishmael versus um, like all of it is pain and suffering. I mean, uh, the so like Abraham cheats on Sarah in mm -hmm. or with her consent. I, however you want to say that. Fathers a child with mm -hmm. Hagar. Um, but then they're ruthless to her mm -hmm. because they're jealous to the point where God like comes and shows her extra special grace um, in that situation. I mean, uh, that is definitely not what God right. originally planned yeah. and wanted. And it just, and, and now you play out the descendants and those two factions still have odds today. Yeah. Um, and so I just, it's one of those things like if, if Abraham had stayed in um, God's plan right there, how much less pain would be, have been experienced by his descendants. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. And, and you know, you, you, you go ahead to like David, right. Mm -hmm. Who had, all these different wives murdered people to steal their wives. Right. And yes, <laughs> but then you look at, and, and we, this is not a big part of the biblical story. It, 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 yeah. it just pops up here and there, but it's significant. His sons engaged in what rose to almost civil war multiple times mm -hmm. where you had the, the Royal family at odds with each other, killing each other yeah. um, because they all had different moms. And it just, I mean, yeah. So when people say, well, in the Bible, all the heroes, yes, they, they many of them were, but it never worked I, out I, well. I've heard many people make this argument. Like the Bible never um, uh, flat out rejects polygamy. Um, and and I, I understand that argument, but the Bible does clearly um, show an ideal, right? Yeah. Um, and so to say that it may not, uh, it never uh, directly disapproves of something is somewhat, it is uh, you should kind of default assume it is if there's something better being presented. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, so if it's not what God said, then it's probably not what he wanted. Is So is, it never paints polygamy in a good light. Yes. It never prescribes it. It never recommends it. Yep. It never suggests it. And it always suggests monogamy, mm -hmm. right? And faithfulness. So, yeah. I mean, yes, oh, it doesn't, but it also doesn't flat out, you know, tell you don't eat Swiss cake rolls. Yeah. <laughs> but right? we know but we that do. Swiss cake rolls right. ought to be eaten in a... Yeah. Wise manner. Yeah. All right. So, all of them. so, so leave the thruple. Yeah. Right. And circle back, back to, to the other, the, the other thing that I want to talk about, which is, you know, the permissiveness. Yeah. So th this might get us in some trouble here. We're ready. Okay. So go, go back maybe eight to 10 years. I don't remember exactly how long ago it was. We, the, the Supreme court ruled on, um, I can't remember the name of the court case now, but it was on same sex marriage. Uh, a burf, a, Oberfell. A, a Oberfell. Oberfell. Yeah. Yep. Now, um, in in that time, now here, you know, I'll just straight up. I don't, I don't think the government has any business in marriage, yeah, in any way. So my my opinion was always, I don't care what the government says. How libertarian of you? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think it's theological, right? Yeah. Marriage is, is something that God invented, mm -hmm. and it's the uh, it's the domain of the church. Yeah, I've I've much more been. Uh, if a government wanted to do that, like that's a separate thing from covenantal marriage before yeah. God, like, right. You know, so, so, so when Obergefell came down, I was kind of in that, that whole place of, okay. Right. I, I mean, I would, ex I would expect in a pagan society that we would sometimes make pagan laws. No, yeah. no big deal. But uh, the, the issue was the argument then was, 
we just want to be able to have what everybody else has, yeah. right? Just to, that, that's all. Everybody else can get married. Why can't we get married? And, and my mindset as, as an American, not as a Christian or as a clergyman, yeah. but as an American was we should just make marriage into a, a contractual agreement like any other contractual agreement. On, on the governmental side. Yeah. yeah. So, you know what? If you're going to get married, you're, 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 you know, you're making a contractual commitment to one another and, and just play it out like that. And, you know, anybody can make a contract with anybody else and I, I'm okay with that. Yeah. But but the whole the whole mindset there was we just want to have equality in marriage. Now, we went really fast from there to a lot of other things. Yeah. Like back then, we didn't have a whole bunch of alphabet soup. Yeah. Can I say that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like we had sure. we had L and G, yeah. right? And that was pretty much it. Well, and, and if you ask most people based on their vernacular, they just said G. Right, we, we just, really just had G, yeah. right, and then we added B. Yep. Is that right? L G B. And and in my mind, and, and this is kind of philosophically and logically, the moment you added B, you invalidated a lot of arguments yeah. of L and G. But we're not going to go there today. Yeah. But you know, very quickly after we added B, we added is Q next? L G B Q T T Q T Q. And, and all of a sudden, and, and where we find ourselves today is I can't keep up. Yeah. Right. And especially that's I can't, why they just put the plus. I, I can't keep up with the T for yeah. sure. You know, because now we're, we're adding genders yep. exponentially. I think we're up into the Which hundreds now. Feels like on a on a uh, philosophical level, it seems to somewhat undermine the previous right. ones too. Yes. Yeah. And, and and I think a lot of people, but self included. We're saying maybe six, seven years ago, you know, a few years into Oberkfell, we're saying, wait a minute, we're moving really fast yeah. now. And we started raising our hands and saying, it, it, we're not too far away from, you know, polygamy. Yep. And we're not too far away from pedophilia. Yeah. Being part of this, and 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 at that point, I'm like, no, you're an alarmist. Oh. You're crazy. You're nuts. We're we're not going there now. Now people still say that about maybe pedophilia, although we're I, starting to change language and, now. Yep. This person is not, they're not a pedophile, they're child or what, minor attracted. Mad, maps, minor yes. attracted people. And so, persons or, you know, know, when I, when I hear about a TV show that's into throuples instead of couples, I'm like, okay, so we're just one step away now. Yep. Yep. And, and that makes me, th that makes me very nervous because I, I think that's, that's another threshold in the progression that is a really dangerous one to cross yeah. because now we're, we're getting into this place of children yeah. right, who can't protect themselves, can't stand up for themselves. And, and the reality is children who are, are sexually abused, and that's what pedophilia is. Children who are sexually abused deal with the consequences of that the rest of their life, and they can never undo what has been done. And, and I feel like we are a whisper away from making that an okay thing yeah. and, and glorifying that. And that's why we need to be a little more aggressive in the way we talk about these yeah. things. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and, and just, I mean, the truth is, uh, you know, Wait, I got to know that is this show really, do they actually use the word thruple? It, I, it's, I think it's called couples of thruple is the title of the, yeah, I, I, it, probably not today, but, uh, I, I've been thinking about this is, uh, how our language so talk about good things from God that have been, that the enemy corrupts yeah. and yeah. deceives us with. Yeah. Um, language is one of those. Mm -hmm. um, and so the couple to thruple, right? And, and you were just hitting on this. By doing that and by creating this new world word, but based on the other word that has, um, that is a substantial word that has a, a real definite meaning mm -hmm. that has weight to it. And then just kind of copy paste, change a little. Um, it is an attempt to uh, gain the um, credibility of the word couple mm -hmm. and apply it to the word thruple exactly. and normalize it just exactly. just by that, that term. And yeah. this isn't a normal thing, mm -hmm. right? And it's, it's if it wasn't a normal thing, it wouldn't be provocative, right? And they know it's provocative. Yeah. That's why they're doing yeah. it. Um, yeah. And so I just I've been thinking about how much in our society um, the enemy goes after our words first, and and, and maybe this has, is has God really said. Yeah. Well, that's you will not surely die. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that, that's one of my big things too, is the, the, the lie of the serpent in Genesis is the same lie being used today. Is that Always. really what you, what Always. they said? Does it really mean that? Yeah. Um, and, and, and not that we shouldn't ever really dig into the meanings of words. We should, it's good to know. Um, but, um, whenever I hear someone say, is that what the Bible really says? Yeah. My first thing is say, stop, let's go see. Right. Let's right. let's let like we can find out for sure. Is yeah. that what the Bible really says? Right. Um, and more often than not, in my experience, when the more someone leans into that argument, um, 
they start playing semantic games mm-hmm. and um, it just gets messy yeah, real I don't, quick. I don't know who originally said this, but you know, you're going to love, love this. The first person I heard say this was Alistair Begg. Okay. Right. That's funny. <laughs> it, who I'm, a, I'm, I'm pro Alistair Begg and you know, unabashedly pro Alistair Begg. Um, so you got to imagine him saying it in his Scottish brogue, right? He sounds smarter right. just because yeah. of that. So anyways, this is what he said. He said, when, when the plain sense of scripture makes common sense, seek no other sense. So, like right. That. It's, it's, that's yeah. a cousin to the one I quote often at our church, which also is from Alistair Begg, yeah. you know, which is the plain things are the main things. The main things are the plain things. Yep. This is a, this is a cousin of that. If it makes sense and it's, it's kind of obvious and it, it is what it is. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And, and, and I would say for the vast majority of scriptures, this is why it's so important that you read it for yourself. Yes. Is it is plain. It is not right. as complicated as people want to make it seem. Mm-hmm. Um, you can read the Bible and understand it. And yes, are there things that you can go in depth and understand even better and even deeper? Yeah. But very rarely have I read something in the scripture. I actually can't off the top of my head think of an actual instance where I read it at face value. And as I studied it, I was convinced it meant something completely opposite. Like right. That's, yeah. I, I grew in my understanding and it was richer and deeper. Deeper, but I've never once been like, Jesus said yeah. this, but he actually meant something he didn't say. Yeah. I mean, obviously there are things in scripture that can be confusing yes. and difficult to understand. Oh, for sure. But but I would always say, if you find yourself at that place, keep reading. Yeah. Because very quickly- It's often context. Very quickly, you're going to get to something that either explains yes. it or, or that, that brings you back to something you can understand. Absolutely. Absolutely. So. That's yeah. awesome. All right. So- um, just a thruple of thoughts here before we're done. No, <laughs> thruple just, of thoughts. Oh, that's funny. All right. So Steve will be back next week. Do we know? I hope so. I, I miss yeah. Steve. Haven't seen him in like yeah. a few Maybe days. Steve, if you're watching this, let us know in the comments. When are you coming back? Yeah. Where did you go? Yeah, we, we have no idea. I knew you were gone, but I've yeah. heard several d- several theories. So yeah, just let us know in the comments if you plan to come back. Otherwise, we're going to give your office to Matt. Uh, maybe he's hanging out with that. It's funny because uh, he doesn't have an office. Pastor. He's with the. <laughs> he's moving that church into the metaverse. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Well, hey, this was a this was a pretty good conversation yep, and good times. We hope you uh, grew from from this, and uh, hopefully we are able to put this on YouTube because hopefully they'll let us keep they'll it let up. us keep it up. Yeah. yeah so all right, uh, we will see you here next week.